but uh, let's move on to today's guest co-host. An accredited performance coach on a mission to help business leaders achieve a body and menta mentality uh, they're proud of. Please welcome to the show uh, the CEO and founder of Coach K, Nazia Khan. Coach, thanks for being with us. Nazia, it's great to have you on board. Nice to be here. Um, we are living in an era uh, of buff CEOs. You know, some of the biggest company CEOs have embraced their, their wellness, they've embraced their fitness as well. They're the ones that get a lot of the headlines working in some of the biggest companies. But what's the sort of, what's the majority out there? Are CEOs still some of the most stressed employees out there? I would say so. Having worked with over 300 right. C-suite leaders in the last year, they take on a lot of stress from the business and then they're under huge pressure and guilt that they don't spend enough time with their family and friends. And all of that takes its toll and they feel more and more guilty at the expense of neglecting their health and fitness. Is that a global problem or are you seeing it more pronounced here? I think it's more pronounced here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I come from London and I haven't seen it there. But then the restaurants, the takeaways, the convenience food, is, I think it's, there's too much of it here. Mm. So everything is, is easy to tap into convenience. Mm. Rather than take a step back and live with intention and actually think about what are we eating? How do we need to perform mentally? What role foods play? for our brain health, for our productivity. And then the lo longevity when you train your body consistently. And it doesn't have to be strength training. It can just be a 20 minute walk a day. Mm. Uh, so so Nazia, you were mentioning there, obviously Tom said specifically about CEOs, but like, and then you said that obviously you've come from London. Um, being in Dubai now, you said that like a lot more foods are like accessible, people are not as fit. How do you recommend people go around like making those changes and balancing that work life as well as fitness? I think mindset plays a huge part because the body will do whatever the mind tells it to. So the intention has to be there that what is our relationship with food? What is our relationship with fitness? Do we want to be healthier, fitter, live longer? And what does that take? And it's actually a lot simpler than people think. I think people think they have to spend an hour in the gym or hours doing meal prep. It's not like that at all. It's about portion control. So the amount of food that's on your plate, how the food is prepped, so the amount of oil, which mm -hmm. oils, and the right macros. So off the back of that, so you mentioned obviously it's easier to gain weight and kind of have this indulgent life in Dubai. Do you not think it's just as easy to have that healthy life here when we have so many meal prep companies and gyms on every corner? I think the city drives people hard. We work longer hours here mm. and there's that life, work-life balance is compromised. You have to fight <coughs> for it. I became a CEO over a year ago and I felt guilty when I left the corporate world because I thought I had to be busy all the time. Yeah. You know, to be that rat race in the right. And you can actually slow down and you could carve out small amount of time that is about self-care. So switching self, sabotage to self-care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you say that in this day and age when, you know, the hustle culture, as Amy mentioned a little bit earlier on, is so big that we almost wear the badge of burnout and we're almost proud of it from what we've achieved? Would you say so? I don't think burnout is ever a good thing and constant burnout. I think taking mini breaks to reset is essential. And I take one or two staycays a month and that, if, by just switching off, I come back a better version. So I don't think burnout is cool. I think prevention is, uh, is better. You know, you mentioned there about the sort of the work play, the work hard, uh, play hard, um, time, in, the, the, the time is everything uh, culture that we've got here. And therefore a lot of people, you know, looking to further their careers and their companies, uh, bottom lines, etc. And a lot of that means that they're sort of you know, maybe not spending enough time on themselves. Weight gain is part and parcel of that. We know that weight gain can have an impact on one's self-esteem, but can it have an impact on a company and yes. profit as well? Absolutely. I think when we 
eat the wrong foods or processed foods, fast foods on the go, it directly impacts our brain health. Right. It reduces productivity, causes uh, brain fog, fatigue. And you know, I found out the other day that our brain takes up 25% of the calorie that we consume, considering it's a very small muscle in our body. So we have to make sure that we're eating the right foods to right. accelerate performance yeah. in a professional environment. Amazing. Well, Nancy, uh, and just, just finishing course, off. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. When we take care of our health, when we take control of our health and fitness, we take control of everything else around us. Mm. So if we're neglecting that, it is likely we are neglecting other areas of our life. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Nazir, and I believe you're going to be staying with us throughout the rest of the episode. But up next, we are talking with a life transformation coach and healer who empowers individuals to explore their pasts for deeper self-understanding. So stay tuned. <laughs>